Thank you for tuning in for this episode of Cleared Cast. I'm Katie Keller, Editorial Communications Manager with Clarence Jobs. And today I am joined again by our editor at the news site, Jill Hamilton. And today we are going to unpack what happened in the news site last week and what's coming up this week. So Jill, thanks again hey. for joining me today. Happy to be here. You are looking great. Tell me about your, uh, your getup. Yes, All I so to for our to listeners table. today, I am wearing a babushka scarf because we have mm. a ton of stories to unpack involving Russia. So I'm really excited to hear about those today, Jill. Yeah, when you were scheduling uh, the whole dress up thing, I'm like, all I have is to dress in black because I'm 40 now. So like, I think I hear that's what I'm supposed to do. Throw <laughs> my spy shades. <laughs> Like, I wasn't allowed to do Halloween as a kid, so, you know. <laughs> right. So I don't, today, I don't know Jill, dress you are dressed is. as a, a, a spy me. or a infiltrator, espionage. So, yeah, exactly. we got our get up going on today to get us inspired to me. talk about these stories. Yeah. So this week, in honor of your, our whole uh, spy look is Russia, Russia, Russia. <laughs> um, so Christopher Burgess, um he unpacked a lot this past few days, um, just all the Russian espionage. Uh, he started first with the Peter Devins case. And, um, but even both that and the Tesla insider story, they both highlight the value of the people that are employed by the national security field. So if you look at Devins, in fact, um, Christopher had three different articles on him especially that last one where you just look at this timeline of events from it was like 2011 till just now 2020 when he was arrested, just all the different elbows he rubbed up against, the um, conferences he was promoted at, and you know then his time in the military before him, that was the part two of, it was a three-part article, just there was just so much to unpack, just how Russia went after him when he was in college, and was a student and got him then, kept the lines of communication open over time, um, taught him how to pass uh, a polygraph, you know, like just all the different things that I think sometimes we think that can't be real. Like when you're getting a clearance and you're getting all the different training, you think, surely not. But it it is out there. And I think both these stories just raise awareness. Um, just that, like, if you see something, it's okay to say something. It's okay to kind of keep your eye on things. Um, I just tend to wonder how many employees that Devin's or coworkers that he came across that were wondering, like, that seemed a little off. <laughs> so tell me about your trip back to Russia. <laughs> what really happened? You know, like anything that might have just popped up that were like, uh, you just kind of bat away. Um, and then, uh, like, he just, it wasn't until he was going through the security process, clearance process a year ago when he actually admitted um, about his, his espionage. I think he was hoping that there would be some leniency. Um, but, yeah, it's also good, like, with the Tesla insider to think about, like, this is the type of employee that we want in the defense industry. I mean, obviously, it's Tesla, so it's a little, it's, it's different than working in national security, but, like, we want loyal employees, um, someone who's willing to turn down a million dollars and do everything. You know, like they did exactly what they were supposed to do. They reported it. The company did what they were supposed to do. They, they called the FBI. They brought the FBI in so the FBI could do what they do. Um, so all led up to the spy getting caught. And Tesla still has his network intact. So I think it just, it really heightens awareness um, as well as helps us think about how we're supposed to respond in these different situations when you're faced with them. So, Well, and, uh, you know, I know that we've discussed this uh, previously, N N the national security field and some of these contractors working, you know, in this industry can take some of these tips from other companies within the commercial sector. But it's a good reminder, if, if you do see something, say something. Um, if you are, you know, an employer or um, an FSO working in a security security position, uh, make sure that insider threat is something that's talked about and 
uh, at the forefront of folks' minds. I mean, insider threat when it comes to um, the cybersecurity implications, but also, you know, physically someone coming into the office, making sure that your employees are up to date on those, you know, their certs and their yearly programs. Mm -hmm. But, you know, have it be sort of a, a a informal conversation throughout the year as well. Yeah. I mean, it's hard because we go through like, federal employees, they go through so much training. I mean, Lindy highlighted it with the OPSEC training that's coming out. I've had one federal employee say, I literally just finished that training on June 30th, and then I had to take it again in July. And I can't tell you how much actually changed. But, like, it's they, we, they do feel like there's overtraining, but mm -hmm. it is so important to have um, – that training there and i think a case like this is really good to highlight because sometimes we highlight the bad actors i think what this insider with tesla does is it highlights the good actors of how the process worked the way it was supposed to happen like things like this are going to happen all the time you know every day <laughs> new threats sure. new day um but when the process is there you have loyal employees they know what to do and they quickly do it it does work so I think that was really what was good about, um, about just looking into this case here. A true patriot, in my opinion. That's right. That's right. So, <laughs> so what then, about in the security clearance world? Yeah. So the one I wanted to highlight this week I thought was super helpful was, uh, let me pull it up here, Sean Bigley's nine security clearance terms to know. So if you're ever wondering what's the difference between active clearance versus current clearance, it just it kind of gives you a download of all the different lingo terms so that you can kind of know what you're navigating when it's when you're looking at jobs, things like that. So that was a really um, helpful piece. And then in career advice, so Steve Leonard blessed us these past two <laughs> weeks. We had a look at uh, stupid questions. <laughs> and meeting sure. they, i don't know if these are my favorite to date i don't i don't know but like all of us can um think about all these times where we just sat in meetings and we're just overwhelmed with the lack of direction and you just think oh, i can never get that time back it's gone <laughs> um yeah. Early on in my career, one of my bosses had me read uh, i think it's patrick lencioni is the name of the author but it's death by meeting so it kind of brought awareness to that of that um, to me early on and I feel like stupid questions goes right on with them because you're in the long meeting mm -hmm. that didn't have an agenda and then they say any questions stop stop please stop <laughs> no, no question exit now <laughs> um and then the person who came in halfway through the meeting they're like yeah I have a question and they're like we already uh, answered that mm -hmm. you know so <laughs> So that those those two are really good. Um, and then I unpacked something that just been on my mind probably since June. You know, as as you all know, I'm new here. I started in June, and so that would mean I quit my job officially in May. And part of the struggle is I quit my job when it was during COVID-19. You know, I said I was a teacher, right. so I said goodbye to my students in March. And then I came back in May by myself to clear up my desk. And like the date for March when we'd be back from spring break was still on the board. It was, Aww. it was so weird. And just kind of like yeah. this slow, like fizzle fade away, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes that can be hard in this current season for people that are considering leaving their job. Um, job security is one, but just like the lack of connection when it's all virtual, is just a little bit harder. Um, so I put together a fun quiz, so you know whether now is the time to quit your job, and also how to do it well. I think it just caught, I went down this one Twitter rabbit hole, and <laughs> of all these people who went out in a blaze of glory, you know, it was <laughs> it was real, really glorious. Walking um, from the explosion behind you, not looking back. <laughs> right. And those, you know, those are all funny to read on Twitter, but when you live that yeah. out in the real world, I don't know that you can ever really come back super well in your career unless you, oh. like, I don't know, like you burn bridges and it's never a good idea to burn bridges. So I did cover out like just different ideas of how to quit well. Um, 
but also like I think this is a good time to look at all the jobs that are open. The national security field is hiring despite the pandemic. And um, it's something we should consider, like what you have to look at, what's best for your career. You can't pick whether there's a pandemic or not, but you do have to look at what's best for your resume and and go from there. So, sure. well, and, you know, that, that's one thing that D Doctrine Man, a.k.a. Steve Leonard and I talked about. You know, when you're deciding, you know, whether it's, you know, you have no upward mobility or there's a toxic leader that you're dealing with, you know, that decision where you wake up and you just, you know, you think, well, I'm kind of over it at this point. Mm -hmm. You want to do it well, though, because, uh, you know, here in Charlottesville, it's a very small compared to the DMV um, you know, mm -hmm. national security arena. You do not want to burn br bridges. You know, there are still defense contractors that I, you know, converse with and, um, you know, chat about different topics. So you don't want to burn bridges. You do want to do that well. Right. I mean, I highlighted in there the story of literally last weekend, someone came up to me and said, hey, I was talking to this woman who just moved on to Fort Belvoir and she's my she's my replacement. <laughs> like, I'm friends with this person who's now friends with my replacement right. who I did not know at all before. Now, granted, different industry, but it was just it just highlights how you think you've got six degrees and it can be gone like that. So. Sure you need to leave carefully and because you never know when you're going to be back new leadership might shake things up it might not be toxic in the future mm -hmm. um you want to leave well yeah so just so. be nice that's my advice <laughs> to recruiters as be well kind. yeah and candidates you know just be nice to recruiters recruiters be nice to candidates everybody just be nice you know everybody right. you don't know what's going on in someone's life i mm. mean the pandemic aside i mean life gets crazy sometimes so just be nice, you know, in your job seeking and your recruiting. Right. Yeah. Be nice. Be kind. That's right. <laughs> right. All right. Coming up this wow. week. Yeah. yeah. So what what's coming up, uh, you know, this week? Um, what can we expect on the news site? Well, Steve Leonard sent me one on incompetent leaders. So look forward to Absolutely. that. So as always, we got <laughs> that's on brand. <laughs> um, and we're also looking at clear jobs in Hawaii. You know, maybe the pandemic's getting Ooh. you down, but it could be time to say aloha. Um, so we'll look at different locations and um, highlight some jobs there. So excellent. And you know, it, it's really funny for any social, you know, live event we do on our Facebook, Instagram. Or any podcast where, you know, I'm interviewing someone who has been in the military, I always ask where their favorite location was. Always Hawaii. <laughs> always. I can't blame them. I mean, I'm sure the cost of living is high. Oh, yeah. But the the landscape is sure, I mean, pretty. Think about the balance for, okay, cost of living is a little bit higher, but your mental health might be a little bit higher so yeah. I mean, can you put a price tag that, on that right figuring out that <laughs> balance when you are in the in the job seeking seat um you know really taking time to think about the bigger picture as opposed to just you know compensation and cost of living i think that's important right. advice right i'm looking forward to that jill me too yeah I, I think like the bigger picture is perhaps maybe one of the things that this pandemic is teaching us you know like mm -hmm. It's not just about, you know, dollars and cents sometimes. It is about, you know, the overall feel and flow of your life. Um, so sometimes it's good to think those things through. So, Absolutely. I mean, not that I'm not looking for things to, you know, shift, shift gears and change. <laughs> sure. Wonderful. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, if you love us, we'll know it by your follows and reviews. So if you haven't done it yet, click your subscribe button and give us a follow. Uh, next week, tune in as we sit down with John Davis. He's one of our contributors, and he's going to be talking about espionage. So if you have any thoughts or questions about security clearances, career advice, intelligence, you want a little bit more on a specific topic, please feel free to send us a direct message on our social media sites or at editor at clearancejobs.com. Thanks so much, Jill, for joining me today. Great to be here.